Welcome back to the Quantum Guide Show. Today is episode 162, and I'm all by myself as my guests could not make it. And I'm going to share with you some of my interesting re revelations that I've had recently that have come to, come to me through both download and visions. And I think you'll find it interesting, and hopefully you will also find it inspiring as it's my goal to help other people realize there's so much more to being human than what we have previously thought or been taught. And, um, and I'm sure a lot of you know that that's why you're here with me today. So um, I'll get started with um, a recent experience I had that was about um, our inheritance. So I was thinking a lot about how people really are gravitating towards escapism. Escapism in many different ways, uh, through addictions and distractions, but also a lot of people want to escape into multidimensional reality. And although I think that multidimensional reality definitely has a place for us, I think that sometimes people are seeking it perhaps for the wrong reasons. So I'm not saying that any of you are wrong or anything you're doing is wrong. I'm just giving you food for thought and things to think about. So a lot of people approach me and want to know how to do astral projection or remote viewing or how to have contact with beings on in outer space or on other planets. And all of that is absolutely doable and possible. But I think we need to be doing it for the right reasons. So I was kind of thinking about this before I went to sleep one night. And as often happens, I wake up in the middle of the night, usually around 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. And all of a sudden, I have insights, spontaneous downloads, I guess you could call them. And um, what's interesting is um, it you see, when I get a download, it seems to hit me all at once. And then it takes me sometimes a few days to unpack it. But what I thought was interesting about this download is it also included a parable that's found in the New Testament of the Bible and is um, apparently the words of Christ Jesus. Now, regardless of your spiritual background or leaning, I think that there's an important lesson here for all of us, regardless of our spiritual persuasion. And, um, and, and it was given to me for a reason, so I'm just going to put it out there. So I was thinking about, um, you know, how a lot of people want to escape. And what are the reasons people want to escape? Well, they want to escape for a number of reasons. One would be they don't feel good. They don't feel good within their own skin. A lot of people are suffering from anxiety, depression, excessive worrying, um, being re-traumatized by memories of the past. You know, a lot of crappy things have happened to a lot of human beings. And um, it's not easy to get over that stuff, for sure. I know I'm working on it all the time, just like you are. And um, But that is not a good reason to escape, because when we want to escape, and I'm talking about any kind of escapism here, when we want to escape, we're missing an opportunity for growth. And I know you're tired of hearing me say that, but it's an important part of being human, of being fully human, is for us to go through not only soul evolution, but to also realize why we're here and the gifts that are all around us and opportunities for growth and to become much more than we ever dreamed possible. And in that way, we heal ourselves and in that way, we go on to heal the planet. And I believe that we are, um, just like my ET friends have told me, we're perfectly capable of healing ourselves, healing our families, healing our communities, healing our countries, and healing the whole planet. And the one thing that we can all agree on is paradise. We would all like to live in paradise. So that may look a little different depending on how you view life or what your beliefs are or your worldview. 
But I think it's a really good starting off point or unifying position for us to come from uh, for goals for what we really want. So I know a lot of people spend a lot of time pushing away the things we don't want, but I have found it much more effective to focus on pulling in more of what I do want. And so I encourage you all to, to try that route if you're not getting the results that you desire. So getting back to me waking up in the middle of the night, um, and all of a sudden I was just hit with this huge visual and spontaneous knowing of a parable. And at the time, I didn't realize it was from the words of Jesus. I had to go look it up the next day. I knew it was from the Bible. I was pretty sure it was from the New Testament, but I wasn't sure where or who said what. So I looked it up and that's how I found out. So the, the parable is about the man who has, basically the pro parable is called the prodigal son. Some of you may be familiar with it. So there was a man and he had two sons. And the one son was very faithful, stayed on his father's estate and worked hard for his inheritance and helped out his father and never really strayed very far at all. But the other son, he took off and he lived a life of debauchery and he blew his inheritance and he spent went through it really quickly and it was gone. And he hadn't really done much for it. He just took it and escaped with it and ran with it. And pretty soon he was left destitute. And one day he's basically hanging out with the pigs eating pea pods, which is what they were feeding the pigs because he had no money to buy anything. And he was thinking to himself, gee, you know, this is not very good. I'm not happy. The money went so quick. Um, I, you know, maybe I should go back to my father, at least there. I'm pretty sure he'd give me work and I'm pretty sure he'd feed me. And I'm pretty sure I would do better than I am out here in the world. So he took a great deal of courage and he went back and he approached his father and he told his father that he was sorry and that he wanted to know if he could possibly have a, have a place in, in his father's estate you know, even if he could just work for his money. I know I'm embellishing this a bit. This is not exactly how the parable goes. But if you look it up, you'll see it's pretty much on track. And his father did not give him shit. His father did not guilt trip him. His father did not make him feel bad at all. In fact, quite the contrary. He welcomed his son back. He embraced his son. He realized that it took great courage for his son to come back. And he even um, prepared a huge banquet and he had um, he had his servants slaughter the fatted calf, which was saved for this most special of occasions and, and prepared a huge banquet and made sure his son had everything his son ever needed. Now, what does this have to do with escapism? Well, what I gathered from the download was that many of us are like the prodigal son. And it doesn't have anything to do with religion. We don't have to go to church. We don't have to go back to church if we've separated ourselves from that. You know, we don't. that's not what it means. What it means is returning to universal consciousness. And sometimes when we've been out in the world and we've been battered and bruised and we found out it's not what we thought it was going to be, it's a much more valuable learning tool than if we had never strayed in the first place. We discover all kinds of things that perhaps we wouldn't have discovered any other way. And then we make the truth our own. So what do I mean by truth? I mean our truth. Our truth that we get, that we gain through going through trials and tribulations and challenges and the truths that we then form once we've stepped outside of the construct and we've gone a bit hog wild for a while and we come back to it. Um, not the construct, I'm sorry, I should say that differently. But we come to our own understanding of what truth is for us. That's when we find our truth. And it's really, I think, an important evolutionary leap that we have to make as human beings. So if you've strayed or you've had, you know, you know, been guilty of all kinds of escapism or even just little escapisms, could be video games, it could be anything. 
the point is that all of that is valuable learning uh, for us. And when we come back to universal consciousness, we're always welcomed back, just like the father, and we're given a fresh inheritance. So I guess the point I want to make here is, what is our inheritance? What exactly is that? Because you may have been working long and hard hours and you're not having the financial benefits you were hoping for. Or maybe you have a very simple, simple life. Our inheritance is all the things we take for granted every single day. So the more time we spend indoors in front of screens, the more we're missing out on what's out of doors. And that's where we notice the miracles and the happenings and the amazing reality that is our inheritance. So sometimes I like to be out on the back porch and I like to relax in the sunshine and feel the breeze in my hair. And um, I notice things. I notice things that I would never notice if I stayed in the house. I notice the birds all have sort of a little hierarchy and a little community and they have different ways of going about things and they have different interactions. I notice signs in the sky and the clouds and even chemtrails. I notice all kinds of changes with the seasons. I change. I notice all kinds of things. I notice that the dandelions are not necessarily my enemy. And then upon, you know, further, um, investigation, I find out they are powerful medicines, and they are growing in my yard to help heal the grass. And, you know, the basically the little meadow area, because it hasn't been getting the nutrients and the things it needs. And so the dandelions are then supplying the earth with the things it needs, so that it can heal and it can be healthy, and it can grow more of what I do want. So that's just an example, is going outside. The same thing happens when I drag myself out for a walk. And I, and I mean it quite literally. Sometimes I literally have to drag myself outside because I don't want to go. You know, I make up excuses. It's too cold. It's too windy. It's rainy, whatever, whatever, right? But I want to actually get myself outside. There's always a surprise. There's always a reward. I end up running into a stranger who I've, you know, someone I've never even seen before. And we get into a brief conversation that's incredibly inspiring. Or I notice some, you know, different wildlife that I never noticed in my neighborhood before. I just notice stuff and I feel so much better. So, um, but there's even more to it than that. Um, many of us want to escape because we don't feel good. So as I mentioned, there's depression and anxiety and things like that. Well, going outside definitely is going to give you a step in the right direction. But often we really don't feel good. People are troubled with lupus and fibromyalgia and all kinds of autoimmune issues. Um, people, and even myself in the past, have become obese. And it's difficult to move our body around and have the kind of energy that we wish we had. There's all kinds of things that can make us feel bad, migraine, headaches, and all kinds of things, diabetes, just on and on and on. There's just no end to the list of health concerns that can um, plague us. And that usually goes along with different kinds of mental health issues that also plague us. And pretty soon we find ourselves in basically a hellish situation where we're not finding any comfort proper rest, and it's really, really horrible. And so what we need is our inheritance. Another way of getting our inheritance is by doing the things we need to do so that we feel better. And you can feel better. I know I spent years and years and years being very ill, very, very ill. That's where I learned that if I can't get out of bed, it wouldn't matter if I won a million dollars. It wouldn't matter. I wouldn't be able to get out of bed. What good would it do me? And I started to realize there were other things that were more important than money. So starting with better health, and we can all have that, but we need to keep seeking it and looking for it. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Right now, I want to switch to multidimensionalism. So basically, the prodigal son is, the, is uh, you and I, and it's when we realize Life is not as good as it could be. 
and we go back to universal consciousness, to a spiritual way of life, we start to care for our temple bodies in ways that we start to feel better. And there's a magical combination when we can bring true comfort to the body and a nice calmness, contentment, and basic happiness to our mind, then we become joyful in our spirit. And that leads us to being able to have multidimensional experiences. So uh, believe me, I've worked very, very hard to get where I'm at today, made many sacrifices. I still do today to take really good care of my temple body. It's not perfect. I'm still working on it. I still have a long way to go. And for the longest time, and even now, sometimes I just take baby steps, but it's always in the right direction. So that is basically it. What I received from the download is don't squander your inheritance. And if you have squandered it, you can always come back. Universal consciousness is very merciful, very loving. You'll be surprised. You might just be watching YouTube videos and things will come into your feed that you need to watch that you just know you need that information. It comes to you at the right time and the right place. And then you can start to turn your life over and to do it differently so that you can have the kind of peace and reward that you deserve. This is your birthright. This is your inheritance. It's not just for Karen. It's for all of us, all of us, all over the world. And it's important that we recognize that we'll make different decisions. We'll see the world quite differently. So, um, uh, yeah, so I'm going to get into multidimensionalism. So this came to me in um, in a vision, and it was very um, interesting. So visions are a little different than a download. For me, a download happens all at once, whammo. And then over the next few days, I sort of unpack it and understand uh, the meaning that that I need to gain from it. A vision is a little different. It's more like a lucid dream. And um, I'm very aware while I'm in that state. I'm usually so tickled pink that I'm in that state. I don't think that perhaps I want to ask for specific things or make specific things happen for me. I'm just going with the lesson. And I really, really enjoy it. So um, in this lucid dream, I basically was in the equivalent to a very large house. And uh, at the time that I entered into that dream state, there was only one floor that I was aware of to the house. And there were people who were after me and I was trying to escape and get away from them. And so I was traveling from room to room and hallway to hallway looking for a, an escape. I wasn't finding any escape. But I was aware of where the other people were. I could hear them. I knew when they were getting close. I could hear doors opening and closing and, you know, um, footsteps on the on the floor and um, just them talking and different things. So I was really aware that they were approaching me. And I thought, okay, I need to get to a place where I'm safe and I'm away from these people. So I wasn't terrified. I wasn't afraid. I just didn't want these people to find me. That was basically it. So as I'm looking around for where, what am I going to do next? Where am I going to go? I notice there's like a, kind of like a, um, a um, I don't know, a, a false door in, in one of the walls. And I go up to it and I examine it closely and I, touch it and it pops open and there's stairs inside and I went oh perfect 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 so I go in and I pull the door shut behind me and I quietly go up the stairs and now I'm on a new level and on the new level which I wasn't even aware of before um all I had was a three-dimensional reality I could see the ceiling and the walls and the floor and you know I could move around within this very large, um, was like a house. And um, I was completely unaware that there was another, another floor. And when I went up to the other floor, I realized that the people that were trying to find me, they wouldn't be able to find me because they wouldn't be able to basically 
find the way to get to the next level where I was. So as I walked around, I noticed that the flooring up on the second floor was completely transparent. I could see everything going on below me, but they couldn't see me. And as I'm walking around, I'm noticing they're looking everywhere. They're, they're frustrated. They're trying to find me. Um, they start going through the furniture in case I was hiding or if there was clues. And then it occurred to me that that's very much like people who go to some of these incredible uh, ancient, ancient, ancient monolithic sites or the pyramids, places like that. And they see all the writing on the wall and they see the, um, you know, the different hieroglyphics or um, even in South America, there's different kind, but still hieroglyphics. And people are always looking, what are, what are they trying to tell us? What are they trying to tell us? And I realized what they are trying to tell you is how to get to the second floor, how to get there. And then I realized I was in another dimensional reality. So I'm guessing, I don't know if it's fourth or fifth, whatever, um, depending on how you look at it or slice it or dice it. So here I was um, able to see them and everything they were doing and um, they could not find me and I was perfectly safe there. So I thought that was really, really cool. But then I realized that there was more to it than that. I not only could see everything that they were doing and what they were up to, I could also sense their motives, their thoughts. And another thing that I thought was really cool is I could see other places and I could just walk through walls and get there. So for instance, other planets, other, other places, other places that I don't even have language for to talk about, to tell you. And I was able just to go there and it was so cool. So what I was being shown was another dimensional reality beyond ours. So for instance, <clears throat> If we were in the second uh, dimension, that would be a line, like a line drawing on, on a piece of paper. And you can move back and forth and, and um, up and down, but you can't get out of the box that's drawn around you because you only have two dimensions. Now, someone like us who's three-dimensional can look into two-dimensional space. And if we wanted to pluck a being right out of there, we could because we have um, height as well as width and, and depth. So we have that whole different dimension gives us basically superpowers compared to anything that might be existing in the two dimensional. Well, when you move on to the next dimensional reality, it's very similar, but even more complex. So instead of just having one added dimension, you actually have another dimension, but it plays out in practical application as having superpowers. So beings that are on that next level would come across very much like gods because we would know everything and <clears throat> not be hindered by time or space and be able to go wherever we want. And so I think I was shown this uh, so that I would tell you about it and so that you would know that we are capable of going someplace else that is more complex and gives you so much more freedom and superpowers. And the other thing, as I mentioned, this is what uh, the, a lot of the sacred writings are trying to tell us. But until we're ready to find that hatch or that false door or that entryway or portal, depending on how you want to look at it, to take us up to the next level, we will never even know it's there. So we can read all the books we want and study all the manuscripts we want till the cows come home and we will never be able to really understand it until we've experienced it. So I, for some reason, experience transdimensional life fairly frequently. Um, I don't know exactly why. I know that my grandmother <clears throat> had extraterrestrial experiences. I believe it's... Um, <clears throat> perhaps hereditary, not sure completely. But I do know that these experiences have gotten much richer and easier to achieve as I've paid more attention to my lifestyle and healing the temple body. So again, getting back to our inheritance, part of our inheritance 
is this multidimensional reality that we only find when we're brave enough to step outside of the construct or the matrix and start realizing this is not just for our ancient gods or which are kind of small G gods or, um, you know, beings that are more advanced than us. No, we can all have this. And I believe you can have it and I can have it. It's part of our inheritance. But again, we have to be willing to make the sacrifices that um, come after we're done with this world. Once we've experienced it, we've gone, no, no, I'm not doing that anymore. Or sometimes we have so much suffering that we just will do anything to make it stop, anything. Now, some people choose euthanasia, and I guess you could consider that a form of transdimensional travel, but it's pretty much a one-way ticket. Everybody thrives when we have a mission, and there is no greater mission than to become the change we wish to see in the world. Sometimes, though, we need a little help from consultation and support services. Have you discovered that this world is not what you thought it was? Have recent global events awakened you and leave you feeling unsettled? Do you feel isolated by your new, not-so-popular beliefs? It is a big shock to wake up and find that the old familiar world is gone. It can be disturbing to go down the various rabbit holes only to find that the information is difficult to digest and few people are willing to talk openly about it. Would you like to learn how to thrive in this new state of awareness? You are not a conspiracy theorist. You are awakening and once you find your way through it, there are many blessings waiting on the other side. My name is Karen Holton, and I offer vital services that may be just what you need and support for your journey into the weird and wonderful. Check out my Awakening Support and Ascension Consultation Services created to support individuals with their chosen alternative realities and lifestyles health and recovery, and their spiritual adventures. For more details, check out the various vital services found on my website and be assured that I have found personal success with every category featured. My website is www.karenholtonhealthcoach.com That's K-A-R-E-N H-O-L-T-O-N healthcoach.com I much prefer to come and go. I think it's much, much more fun. And I bring with me back into the three-dimensional reality of the lessons and the learnings and the teachings that I've gotten from my trans-dimensional reality. So that leads me to um, the third and final part of my discussion with you today. And that is the Quantum Health Transformation Program. Now, I received this in a download way back uh, between 2011 and 2013. Um, I was not well at the time. I didn't even understand uh, the information. I just took me about two years to finally put it in some kind of order. And um, I came out with the original series, and then I upgraded it in 2017 and came out with the version 2.0. And now I've just finished um, updating it to the 3.0 because there were components that were missing that I needed to add, and um, I needed to fine tune it. So I've just spent um, a couple of months completely re-editing all 360 pages worth. Don't worry, you don't have to sit down and read 360 pages. It's been divided up into 12 basic lessons, which covers nine steps. You start with step nine and you learn about quantum physics and the multidimensional reality that we can experience in our conscious everyday lives and how we can make that work for us. And it gives us a glimpse into that dimension that's beyond us. Step eight teaches you all ways, all kinds of ways to soothe yourself, to bring comfort to yourself, to your mind, 
to your body and help you to start feeling some relief and some contentment and some happiness. Step seven will teach you about integrating your male female energies. Oops, I forgot to mention back in step nine. And yes, you start with step nine and you work your way down towards step one. You also will learn how to do shadow work where you integrate your shadow and your light being so that you can be a whole integrated person, be more honest with yourself, understand yourself better, and that gives you much more personal power. So again, step eight is self-soothing and how to take good care of your body and your body temple. Step seven is to integrate your male and your female energies and how to step outside of uh, gender stereotypes. And this has nothing to do with gender politics in case you're wondering. Step six is detoxification, and it's very um, intense, and that's why it's been divided into three separate lessons. So um, part one is all about external detoxification, where you'll find out that many of the cosmetics, personal care, and cleaning products you may be using are actually causing you to become toxic, sick, and might be adding to your woes. Part two is internal detoxification, where you will learn about food-like substances and the difference between that and real food and how that can affect your mood and affect your health. And part three is emotional detoxification, where you learn that all of your emotions are important and you can make them all work for you regardless of what they feel like or how yucky they might feel like in the moment. Then we get into step five, where you will learn about food <clears throat> and how food is actually a source of universal love energy. And it's been proven through science and different uh, forms of um, photography, like Curlian photography. And you want to eat foods that are full of life force. And that's going to feed your light body. And that's going to feed your body temple and heal you and put you in a position to have more transdimensional experiences. Uh, step four is how to basically recognize and step out of the construct, how to detoxify from the construct, very, very important. And step three is all about manifestation, how to supercharge your law of attraction so you get more of what you want in life. And that's certainly gonna help you to feel better and um, help you to feel more grounded and help you to feel more secure. Step two is all about how to create a framework so that you can have the spiritual exercises and experiences that you deserve and you want, what makes sense to you. You have complete free will on how you want to um, create a framework and have different kinds of guides or a soul team I could not be where I am today without a soul team. I need them. And they've been amazingly helpful in my life. And then step one is some spiritual exercises, which is like the icing on the cake to really, really help you to be a whole human being. And all of these steps are going to help you to bring comfort to your body. So you physically feel comfortable in your own skin. You don't want to run away to anywhere. You don't need to escape. You can just feel so lovely just sitting in a chair <clears throat> or reclining or even standing doing a simple task. And you go, wow, I didn't know I could feel like this. This is amazing. And it's so wonderful to be alive. It also brings that basic contentment, peacefulness, harmony, happiness to the mind. So we're not obsessively thinking about what other people are doing or saying. We can start thinking clearly. We can just feel good and make plans to help us have a better life within our mind, the mental, the mental body. And then, of course, these two things lead to spiritual joyfulness, where we know we're safe. We know that we can have some amazing experiences Yes, we're here on earth to learn specific things and to evolve, and that's important. But we also can have the spiritual components where we're getting downloads and transdimensional experiences that really, really help a lot. 
and make our lives just just so full. We never, I never dreamed that life could be like this. And you know, no health um, agency, no psychology agency, no church, nobody taught me these things. Nobody. It's like a, it's like the big kept secret, so that we're just stressed out and easily controlled. And there is a war against humanity. There really, really is. And if you've been noticing that, you are not a conspiracy theorist. You're waking up. And it's really important to go through the, the discomfort of realizing that the world is not what we thought it was. And that's part of us returning back to our inheritance. And that inheritance is for you and for me and for everybody. So um, I guess that's about it. I told you about the Quantum Health Transformation Program. It's absolutely free. So I have um, 12 primers um, in PDF form available from my website. But the basic program is absolutely free and it's a series of video tutorials. So there's 12 um, video tutorials and then there's also going to be actually 13 um, workshop videos. <clears throat> and I'm about, I've completed all the video tutorials. They're all up. You can either look at the playlist on my YouTube channel or you can go to my website and look under the free resources tab and clearly it's marked there, a free online course, Quantum Health Transformation. Just click on that and just start with the introduction and go through the lessons. As you're ready, you'll make the changes that you need to make. It's not really one of those courses that says you have to do this and you have to do that. It gives you a whole bunch of options that you choose from when you're ready. You'll choose what you want to work on. Just take that which resonates with you. Don't worry about the rest and just do your best. That's all you need to do. So I'm about halfway through the video workshops. So we've done an orientation, step nine, eight, seven, parts one, two, and three of step six. And this Sunday, I'm going, going to be working with um, Don Rogers, Canadian Spinja, and her son, Ray, uh, in another workshop where we're going to cover step five and go into the whole issue around food. What should you eat? What shouldn't you eat? And the whole nub of the nub on that one is you want to eat real food and you want to eat food that makes you feel well. And so you can be a carnivore, you can be on keto, you can be a vegetarian, a vegan, you can eat however makes you feel well. It's all okay as long as you're feeling good and you've got that comfort that your body needs in order for you to relax. And that will help your mind to relax. And then your whole world shifts and changes. You don't have to be part of the rat race anymore. So, um, so I'll continue with the workshops. And as we complete them, they'll go up on my website. And they'll also appear on the Quantum Health Transformation version 3.0 playlist that's on my my YouTube channel. All of the links are below in the description. So I hope you'll join me. I hope you'll share this and my other videos with your friends, with your family, and uh, help to get the word out there. And also, um, I hope you subscribe. I hope you like this channel. Uh, I like this video, I should say, because it's been, um, a, it's been a bit of work trying to grow my channel. And I, I'm not going to lie, I could use the help. So if you feel so inclined, please do share my information with other people. So that's about it for today. Um, we talked about <clears throat> our inheritance and we talked about multidimensional reality. There is another floor above the second floor. I just want to tell you that. And I experienced some of it, but I do not have language to share it with you. So um yeah, you're going to have to get to the second floor yourself and then from there, hopefully make it to the third floor. And it's it's just an amazing reality. I never dreamed life could be like this. It's, it's, it's such a pleasant surprise, such a, a real pleasant surprise. 
So if you are finding you're bogged down with <clears throat> addictions and distractions, might be time to make the sacrifices you need to make and grow an internal parent and make some policies and rules for yourself to help you get back on track and you'll find it's absolutely well worth it. So thank you for joining me today for the Quantum Guide Show and <clears throat> we'll see you next week. I've got the fourth and final shadow panel next week. So I'll be joined by Chris Matthew, Brandon Thomas, Ryan Patrick Burns and Frankie the Fearless for um, my last um, part four of the shadow um, panel. So join us for that. And that's about it. Much love to you all. And we'll see you next week on the Quantum Guide Show. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for joining me for the Quantum Guide Show. Become the change that you wish to see in the world. Subscribe to my YouTube and other channels at Karen Holton TV. Click the like button, leave me a comment, and share this podcast with your friends. Check out my website at www.karenholtonhealthcoach.com to see my free resources and amazing products and services. All the links will be in the description below. As part of the Forbidden Knowledge Network, you will find the Quantum Guide Show with Karen Holton and also the Aliens and Angels podcast on all audio platforms. Until next time, keep up the good work.